I've tried everything, and my ankles and my feet are still swollen. Welcome to the Shikama Live Show with your host, Shikama. I'm going to give you a list of how to cure your swollen ankle and feet. Let me first say one thing. The medical profession, doctors do not have nutrition in med school. They have one day of nutrition in three years of med school. That's right. They have one day of nutrition in three years of med school. The business model for Western medicine, medicine in the United States, is not to cure you. The business model in Western medicine is to treat you. They're not interested in curing you because if they cure you, you do not come back. If they treat your symptoms, you come back for more treatments. They're just treating symptoms. They do not care to cure you. That's, that is not their business. Now, let me say right off the top, I am not a doctor, but I am entertaining. And this is all just for entertainment purposes only. Your feet are swollen. Your ankles are swollen. You've tried everything, right? And they're still swollen. Well, Shikama has the answer for you. Shikama does such weird stuff as goes and reads medical studies and they don't have pictures on those medical studies they don't even have charts they don't even have lists shikama makes the list shikama makes the charts for for stuff that and shikama has the pictures to make stuff interesting i'm gonna think that you actually do not want to know the cure for the swollen feet and ankles why don't you want it because what i'm about to tell you is going to be hard and uh, what I'm about to tell you is going to take effort. And what am I going to, uh, what am I about to tell you? It doesn't come in a pill. The whole idea of a pill is that it works instantaneously. It's like, it doesn't cure you, but it treats you. And the treatment cures your symptom immediately. Well, it just so happens for the swollen feet and swollen ankles, the treatment that you get from your doctor doesn't uh, cure you, cure the, the uh, symptom immediately. In fact, I don't know why you keep going to the doctor if he, you, he keeps prescribing you these pills that are supposed to treat something, but they don't actually treat anything. What's the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over and again, expecting a different result. Why are your feet and ankles swollen? Your body's trying to tell you something. It's, it, it's not just, that's what happens. No, your body is trying to tell you something. That's why we get bigger. That's why we swell up right? If you have an allergic reaction to something and you swell up, uh, you know, you as a, uh, some of you are parents, right? If your kid swells up all of a sudden, you go, oh my God, something is wrong. My ki kid's eye swelled up. My kid's uh, jaw swelled up. My, my kid's tongue swelled up, right? You go, oh my God, something's wrong. But for some, for some reason, people see swollen ankles and feet and they say, oh no, well, I guess I'll just mosey on over to the doctor because absolutely nothing is wrong. But I just, I want to st I still wear my nice pedicure. So I better go mosey over to the doctor. You tried going vegetarian and even shamed other people who were not vegetarian because you were convinced vegetarian would make your feet and ankles go down. Meanwhile, the swell swelling did not go down. You then got super serious and you went vegan. The feet and ankles didn't go down either. Still didn't go down. Okay, now, okay, 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 okay. You still look like you were walking on loaves of bread. So then you said, okay, enough is enough. I am going to go raw vegan. I'm super serious. Well, you grew through whiskers, but your feet didn't swell, stop swelling. Your ankles did not stop swelling. And you look like you were walking on bowling balls at this time. That is not... I saw a lady who actually gave a TED Talk. And here's the deal. 
the TED Talk people did not show her video on the TED Talk channel, on the TED Talk website. Why did, do you think that they did not show her video on the TED Talk channel and the TED Talk uh, website? Because she said that she discovered the reason why her feet and her ankles were swollen were not from something she thought was cured by being a vegetarian being a vegan being a raw vegan she tried all of that and the swelling did not go down she said when she went full carnivore strict carnivore all of her symptoms of everything that she was allergic to that she was having all these reactions to all stopped because she she didn't go carnivore full carnivore at first she she thought maybe she could just introduce meat and then the st stuff would go away no didn't go away so then when she went full carnivore everything went away that video never made it to the ted youtube channel nor onto the ted website properly why i i, I mean i don't know about you but I, i'm pretty sure carnivore is not in the mainstream i, I don't believe it's on the six o'clock news i know you have videos here on youtube but it is not mainstream you know what is mainstream talking about being vegetarian and vegan so if a person says you know what i tried vegetarian i tried vegan and all of these specific health issues that i had did not change at all and i went full strict raw vegan and it didn't change did not change but once I got into the camp of full carnivore, all of that changed. And in fact, everything that I had even uh, had a problem with changed. Stuff that I didn't even, that I took for granted that that's just how I, I function. A lot of people think, you know, like they walk funny or they uh, slur some words or they always itch their ear or they itch their nose or they... Uh, make their tongue uh, that sucking noise and they have to stick their tongue at the top of the roof of their mouth and they itch they try and itch or what feels like the inside of their brain and they just think that that's something that they no those are all allergic reactions so she had all of these allergic reactions that were going on that she just thought were just a part of life and then when she went on full strict carnivore all of that stopped she got a full night's sleep. S swelling went down. Hair grew out. Whiskers vanished on her face. Feet stopped with swelling. Ankle stopped swelling. N knee joints all stopped swelling. All the knee joints stopped. She, she thought that's just how she's made. That her, her wrist and her elbows and her shoulders just are supposed to look like that. No, when she went on straight carnivore, that all disappeared. Now, so one of the answers Shikama has for you is why don't you try strict carnivore? But here's here's the deal. You probably have never gone carnivore. So what I say is why don't you test it out and you're going to build it up to seven days, right? So you're going to have one day a week carnivore, strict carnivore, two days, three, four, five, six, seven, right? And you're going to build up to that. And what's going to happen is you should see results of you should see results immediately why because you probably have a terrible diet you're probably eating stuff that does not agree with you but you just don't even know that it doesn't agree with you you just thought you're supposed to be you know walking around burping and stuff like that right you, right? She, like she said, uh, she just thought her joints were supposed to look like that. She just thought her ankles and, and feet are supposed to look like that. No. Once she got to the full bore, she was like, oh my God, stuff disappeared that I didn't even know that that's how I was supposed to look. The body was trying to tell her. She wasn't a big girl to begin with. Uh, her body was trying to tell her, no, you're not. So the, we, we swelled up. That's, that's our indication that something's wrong. And people don't take the hint that that's something wrong so carnivore is one i say build up to it uh one day maybe skip maybe skip a couple of days but the thing is you don't want to be strict carnivore one day and then eat donuts the next day so that's point number two a lot of stuff is caused by carbohydrates 
And here is some misinformation that is out there that carbohydrates are a macronutrient that you need. A lot of bro science, a lot of bodybuilders, a lot of weightlifters are in this camp that they feel that you should have carbohydrates. No, what's happening is, uh, first of all, it's a, uh, bodybuilders have a terrible diet. I know they looked like they should be the peak of physical conditioning, but that's not so what's happening. They are doing st stuff like eating carbohydrates and the muscles really like the carbohydrates at the time and it's temporary. So then they go and lift weights and they get bigger because that temporary uh, fix for the muscle is right there, is right there and present, right? It's, it's sort of like the doctor giving a pill. Uh, but long term, you end up with, uh, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger even giving talks about, uh, look at the guys today. They have these huge stomachs because they eat horribly. Talking about the bodybuilders, right? There's also this other misinformation that salt will make your feet and ankles swell. Why is that mis uh, misinformation, Shikama? Because what they're talking about and what the technical reality is, they're talking about two different things. It's just the same sort of thing about people talking about fat is bad for you. Saturated fat is bad for you. That is misinformation. Saturated fat is not bad for you. The best possible thing that you can eat, we're talking coconuts, we're talking avocados, we're talking about certain nuts, we're talking grass-fed beef, we're talking clover grazed beef, free-range chicken that eats all of the nice stuff that's uh, in, in the uh, free range of, of, of the farm and the, and the pastures saturated the fat saturated fat that you get from that will build your body and make you live a very long time saturated fat but they are stuck in this world of saturated fat salt bad for you no saturated fat is not bad for you hydrogenated saturated fat is bad for you refined table salt is bad for you a fully mineralized sea salt is fantastic for you and it is an essential component for life. Do you know what, what is not a, an essential component for life? Ingesting carbohydrates. Why? Because the body actually transforms proteins into carbohydrates. The body does that. So if the body does that, that is by definition, not an essential vitamin. An essential vitamin is something that the body does not produce. Have you ever been told that you do not actually need a calcium pill? Why? Because the body produces calcium all by itself. You do not need calcium. What you do need is vitamin D3 to process the calcium. If you had a fantastic intake of, of perfect vitamin D3, you would process all the calcium that your body produces perfectly, right? You don't need to ingest donuts. You don't need to ingest Subway uh, loaves of bread from Subway sandwiches. You need to get off the carbohydrates. There are people who have been strict carnivores for over a decade. Strict, meaning all of their intake is water, salt, and meat. All of it. And they are, all of their uh, testing, their blood tests, all of their medical tests are perfect. Why are they perfect? Because they're eating the pristine grass-fed beef, liver, organ meats, all of that stuff that is packed full of vitamins. It is packed full of vitamins and it's not only vitamin dense or nutrient dense you do not need an entire bushel of it the problem with vegetarian and vegan is now we're discovering discovering that plants do not want to be eaten so they produce a lot of uh, n uh, neurotoxins nutrient toxins antitoxins antivitamins so that when you eat the plant not only does it stop you from 
ingesting and processing the nutrients in the plant that you ate, such as spinach, raw spinach, it will also stop, stop you from processing the nutrition from everything else that comes behind it until such time as you uh, waste it out of your body, get it out of your body. That's plants. And we're, they're discovering that almost all plants have that. And if you keep ingesting the plants, you get worse and worse and worse. This is why you see the very strict vegans that are super thin and then they uh, develop wasting disease, wasting muscle disease. And that is irreparable. You can't come back from that. And you have uh, them all dying of the C word. But the propaganda is that they do not die from the C word, but they do. They actually do more so than the people who have a regular American diet. We're not even talking about the carnivore people, the people with a regular American diet. They are worse off than the people with a regular American diet. But the propaganda says that they don't. But the people who have actually done research said a couple of things. First of all, it's very hard to find somebody who actually is a strict vegetarian, a strict vegan and uh, the interpretation of vegetarian or vegan also includes a lot of donuts cakes candies stuff like that right a lot of sugar a lot of sugar intake why because uh a lot of their food is not very tasty you can eat a steak and not want anything else if you eat a veggie burger you're probably gonna want some some something else afterwards i'm not trying to be funny here now so, uh, point number two and three, don't need carbs. You do not need carbs. Your body produces carbs. Go look that up. And uh, number two, you need salt, but you need good salt. You don't need table salt. Stop letting doctors tell you that salt is bad for you. Salt is essential for you. You need salt. You need good salt. You do not need refined table salt. I don't even know why they would make refined table salt. I don't, I don't know. They, they actually go through all this process to make something from something else that requires energy, time, and money to produce something that's actually not good for you when they can literally just transport something, package it, and, and, and deliver it to you. No processing needed. Maybe some filtration, but no processing needed. Uh, but that's that's our food industry. There's a lot, whole lot of stuff like that. Now, so you're 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 taking the good salt. Uh, you are lowering, almost zeroing out your carb intake, right? Okay. Now we're getting down to the nitty gritty. What is the uh, S level, the the top tier way to actually get rid of the swollen ankles and feet? It's along the lines of that whole impact of one meal a day what they are actually saying is we want to reduce your eating time to six hours then four hours then two hours then one actual one meal a day and you can pig out meaning that you can eat a lot in that one meal and if you do it correctly and you have your good fats not your hydrogenated man-made hydrogenated fats you're actually good fats, which includes what? Saturated fats, medium chain fats. You will be full the entire day. You know what your brain actually subsists off? Fat. You know what your heart actually subsists off of? Fat. You know what your arteries and veins and circulatory system, uh, uh, vascular system actually uh, subsists off of? Fat. Your brain is one big blob of fat. That's what it is. So it loves fat. It replenishes itself with fat. This is how they have the studies that they've done on coconut oil, which is fat. Uh, and they have had fantastic results with Alzheimer's patients. They've done the same thing with the uh, organic, cold-pressed, uh, extra virgin olive oil. Fantastic results. Not as fantastic as coconut oil, but fantastic results compared to not, not anything not eating fats right now i'm assuming that they would uh get the same thing i have not read anything but i'm assuming that they would get the same results if they were uh doing studies on stuff like sardines cod cod liver oil salmon salmon 
the fatty fish and you ate all of all the fat now they have had all the results with eating salmon like f fantastic health results for that okay and finally walking walking one hour walking just walking one hour if you did every all of the list that i just listed out uh i believe i believe first of all you're going to receive results immediately you, you should go ahead on your most puffy day measure your feet do what i just told you for a month and then go measure your feet just one month a lot of these people on youtube they say i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do that and they only do it for a month and they get no results well they get no results because they did this one thing but they're still eating donuts they're still eating cake and then there's people who say i did this for a month but what they did was they did all the stuff that i just talked about and so they go look at my results well a lot of times they have all the time in the world because they're a youtuber so they can walk for two hours drink fully mineralized water eat one meal a day that's all carnivore uh high fat uh diet uh meal right no burgers, no Subway sandwiches, no donuts, no cake, no candy. And they do their push ups and they do their push ups and they do their <laughs> sit ups and then whatever, whatever the, the video of the of the month is that they're trying to do. Right. And so they go, look, look, look what happened to me. I only did it for 30 days. Yeah. Well, you you kind of cheated. You did the perfect thing for 30 days. Plus you did push ups. Plus, you did sit-ups. It wasn't the push-ups and the sit-ups that did. It was the all that other stuff that you did. It's just like that Subway guy. He says, I lost 150 pounds. No, you had a team of 12 people helping you. And, and they told you exactly what to eat, how to eat, how to exercise, uh, what to drink, uh, everything, right? There you go. Uh, and, Sh and Shikama is giving you the answer to it. Now, other people say, well, you know, you put on a 50-pound uh, a rucksack and uh, you go for a 10-mile a, a uh, run and uh, you will not have swollen feet. You probably actually will still have swollen feet because you haven't, fin you haven't fixed all the other behaviors that I've talked about, right? As a matter of fact, as far as the salt thing is concerned, there's a lot of doctors who think it's, it is criminal to tell people to stop uh, eating salt and not tell them, eat the correct salt. They think it's criminal that they are telling people that fat is bad for them, uh, when in fact what they mean is the hydrogenated fat is bad. Fat is inessential to life, and you should eat the best fat. They keep saying the good and bad fat. They're just saying good and bad fat. I'm talking about the best fat. The fat that comes from non-processed stuff, non-processed and non-GMO, uh, pasteurized, whatever word you want to throw in it. Right? Thank you all for watching. And I hope this video has been entertaining for you.